Hello, 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 and welcome back to Tamiya Talks Abundant Life. And I'm very excited. This is my uh, third segment with Pastor Anu Das, who is a host or the host of One New Life and for CBN. And she broadcasts all over the world and she films from India. She is the pastor of House of Prayer in New Delhi, India. And she is my guest today and for the last few segments on Tamiya Talks Abundant Life. So pastor, welcome back. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad that we could talk about my experience and it's amazing. It feels good. Well, I love it. Your story is, is really amazing. And these few segments that we're doing is, is, is only the icing on the cake. I'm very excited. I will be working with uh, Pastor Daz as she puts together her story, her life story, basically. And it was perfect that she was able to experience all that she experienced here while she was in the U.S. because it's just a little icing on the cake of the whole of the story that we'll be able to share together. So I look forward to that. <laughs> now, with this, if you watch the previous episodes, which I would encourage you to go back if you haven't watched the previous segments, because we want to get right into the meat of things and what happened when she actually got to L.A., our previous segments uh, kind of led us up to her coming to Las Vegas, her needing to get help when she got to LA. Now she's in LA and she's going to share with us in this segment, her lessons learned while she was in LA. And she's also going to talk to us about her perspective of the U S and how it changed from working with pastor Clayton Gallagher and his hope for homeless youth program. So please pastor share. So this was my fourth visit to U.S. and every time I would come, I was uh, like picked up from the airport because I would depend highly on uh, my host because it's a new country and I was not a very big traveler before. And for many years, I was at one place preaching to my uh, local congregations or maybe within my country. So I did not travel much before. So I had this uh, travel phobia that if I'm going to a different country, I should be taken care from the airport. So every time I went, I was uh, taken care. Uh, somebody known will come to me from the airport and they will pick me up. Or even if I don't know them, I would know them through the uh, photos or messages before. But here I was meeting somebody whom I never met before. I have not seen before. I'm, I'm going to stay with people I have no idea about. So when I reached there, uh, I, I had the privilege, pastor asked me to uh, share in the Bible study. So I was taken to a trailer park and uh, there we had a, a Bible study with uh, homeless people, previous addicts or a present drug addicts and a lot of homeless people and some people who lived in mobile homes and you know, in the trailer park itself. And uh, that's where uh, I was very, very humble when I was speaking to you know, these people because uh, I, I was, I had the opportunity to speak in Seattle. I had the opportunity to speak in Texas and you know, like Dallas. And then um, I, I had the opportunity to speak in, peop in, in front of people. But, you know, usually what we do, like after 15 years in ministry, um, though I started uh, working with, I do work with a lot of people who are underprivileged, but then you always look for a big congregation to preach and you, you want to be like appreciated by a lot of people who are very educated maybe. So you feel satisfied when you do like that because this is honest confession. So when I was there, I, I didn't know whether they will understand me. I didn't know whether I'll be able to make myself presentable enough for them to understand. And when I started to speak, I just asked God that, Lord, uh, for as I'm speaking to these homeless people, addicted people, and maybe previously addicted or presently addicted, so they, they look a little lost, many of them. And, and I saw the flow of the Holy Spirit and, and I saw the... Uh, presence of God descending and everybody uh, almost 90% of them responded and you know, we uh, finished with a lot of uh, joy and I, I left that place with a lot of good friends 
and that's where I first time I realized that there is another side of United States of America that I never saw before that is this side and there was a reason God first three times to US I didn't see that part and this time God showed me that part to know that um, there is a lot of struggle in this country as well and first time I felt like I'm a missionary to that a uh, rich country that we thought we usually think to go and attend conference and receive from it and first time I was in a position where I was giving and uh, you know I felt like okay I needed to see this part of US where there is pain there is a lot of brokenness people are lost and a lot of people during that five days I had personal encounter with and that was amazing. I heard stories. I heard people how uh, they found God in the prison. I heard stories of uh, people who were completely addicted coming out of addiction. I heard story of one gentleman who, who was betrayed by people who wanted to commit suicide. And that's where Pastor Clinton comes and Clayton comes and he rescues him from there. And uh, I went out with him, served with him, and it was amazing experience because in U.S., I, in my country, I do have street ministry, but in U.S., I never imagined I would be participating in one, and that was very humbling. I I I learned so much during those few days, and I'll tell you about how uh, where I was like my stay. First day, I was put in a, a hotel, and then I didn't want to. I put a lot of burden on pastor so i said uh, i can adjust myself somewhere so i was supposed to stay with few uh, people in the trailer park and i found out that it was a uh, lot of people stay there who are addict addicted so i was very afraid so i chose to stay uh, which is not very uh, uh, it was not a very comfortable thing for anybody but I chose to stay in a boy's home and who were previous homeless people. And it was very scary for me. It was because I did not know any of them so far, except for the one who picked me up from the airport. And I had to really trust God. I had to really trust God. First night I couldn't sleep. I was on the couch the whole night sitting and praying and asking God to clear my purpose. But God might be laughing because he knows the end from the beginning. He knows this is, what he's doing. Yeah, this is so good. And I'm being, I'm just smiling and so encouraged by what you're sharing because so often we spend our time and it was kind of like we was talking in the previous segment where we plan our trip and we say, we're going to go here. We're going to go there. We're going to do this. We're going to this, da, 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 da. and the Lord allowed the disruption, you know, and this, it's not a surprise to him that your girlfriend was not going to make it to LA. It was not a surprise for him that you would be connected with me. It was not a surprise to him that you were going to be connected with Pastor Clayton. The surprise was to you to see yes. how much of a blessing you truly are when outside of your comfort zone. And that was what we were talking about in the previous segment is you were forced to be outside of your comfort zone and to decide Lord God, how are you going to use me? Because I have no clue. So continue telling us. That is so amazing to hear your testimony. As you said, I was totally out of my com comfort zone. And I'm a person who wants to figure out everything in advance. I was a person like that. Like if I have laid out all the plans and it is happening exactly the way I want, then I'm very peaceful. I was like that. But last 16 years, I'm learning how to follow the steps one by one, little by little, step by step. And sometimes your plans are not the best plans and uh, God has a totally different plan. And I feel that uh, no matter how much I read in the theory, uh, maybe in the books about faith, until unless we stay, step out and we don't take a step of faith, we don't learn. We can't have a theory of having faith. We have to really walk by faith. You know, we have to really step out. And I was stepping out, though I have traveled before, but this was like, oh my God, this is actually what I was feeling like real travel. Amen. <laughs> real it, was, it was a trust 
walk for you, literally. You had to trust that the Lord was going to provide the next step when you took that step. Many times, because whenever he asked me to go somewhere, I always know that uh, it's not going to be easy because by nature, I was not a person who would like to travel. I'm happy at one place. I'm happy preaching to my congregations and I'm happy preaching uh, may maybe here and there nearby. Uh, I I'm happy when I preach on the television because I feel very comfortable there. So it was like totally something that I did not plan. And I believe I learned so much in those five days, which I didn't learn perhaps in the last five years. That's really good uh, as a missionary. So my first missionary trip that I physically went on was to Santa Cruz, Bolivia. And it was finally me deciding not to keep writing a check towards missions in the trip in, in church when they would say, write a check towards missions. And I would write a check and go, okay, I've done it, right? So I finally decided to physically go and experience mission. And the thing about that is I too, like you, am a speaker and a preacher and a teacher, you know, so I'm very used to having someone pick me up at the airport and everything squared away and people are expecting me everywhere I go and that kind of thing. So the true walk of a missionary, bear in mind, we still are putting out our message and, and we're a missionary in a way doing that. Yet that's the comfortable, comfortable missionary, not someone who has to say, oh, where am I going? What's the next step? Now, that's how most missionaries lead their lives. So they're trusting God to not only provide the finances, which you were talking about that, and you had added expenses now, you know, so you definitely needed assistance with finances there. And your whole itinerary was ripped up. What you thought you were going to do was not what you ended up doing, yet you were extremely blessed. So what would you say to somebody who is possibly facing that same situation where the plans that they had <laughs> were not are not necessarily lining up, yet they are in a spot where they need to trust and believe that God is going to work all things together for their good. See, I believe totally in God giving the desires of our heart. He gives it eventually. But then it, it may not happen the way we want. It may not happen the way we prefer. He chooses the path. He uh, plans out how he's going to do it. And sometimes when he is not giving us something that we plan to have, or uh, it hasn't arrived the way we wanted it to arrive, I believe that we have to trust in Jeremiah 29, 11 in that place that my plans are only for prosperity, not for harm, to give you hope and future. And I believe that you cannot plan your past so the plan that God has is only for future. And all the plans that he has are only of prosperity, of no harm. Whether it is good, whether you feel good or not, his plans are the best. It is for prosperity. It is of no harm. And true prosperity starts with our soul. And everything that is happening around us is to make our soul very rich first. Amen. I, I believe that, Pastor. Yes, I definitely believe that. And what I love is the stories that you were sharing with me of the people that you met, especially at that center. You know, because not only were you preaching, you know, in the in the trailer park and speaking to the young men at the center, but you also did outreaches and things that that normally you would not have done had you have followed your original plan. So I love these lessons that you are sharing with us, letting us know that. You know, our plans are not always his plans. And in the end, he will work them together for our good and to bless the people who are around us. So as we end this segment, Pastor, share with me the, your biggest takeaway from that L.A. experience. My original plan was to meet Pastor Benihin and meet, meet Pastor Crick in the Love World studio. And that was my dream was coming to like, the, I was all ready for that. And I was disappointed the first place when it didn't take place. I, I felt so out of place. I felt like maybe I made a mistake of planning this trip. But I know very clearly that from the beginning when I was preparing my trip, he said from this date to this date, you're going to be in LA. So I knew in my heart it was God's plan. And the biggest takeaway was I had always a different 
idea about us and in that trip i saw the other side of us and i had always you know uh, people was already treating me like a celebrity because i come on television and i i'm very as you said that everybody is uh, taking care of you and suddenly every comfort was gone so second thing i felt that i learned something about faith that when you jump into unknown without knowing that what is next that is where you see the beauty of god taking care of you because i got a word on the following sunday that i went to church that was amazing that was amazing because i needed to hear that 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 would put me back on track after 12 years oh years my goodness suffering. you're setting us up for the next segment so everybody this is what you're going to do you're going to come back so you can hear the word that pastor anu got that tied this all together and you're also going to hear the amazing uh, the, the icing on the cake of her testimony because we mentioned that she was going to LA and then from LA to another place. So we are going to talk about that when we come back because I think you will be very excited to hear how God worked all things out for her and it was definitely a reward for trusting him in LA. So we will see you on the next segment talking about the journey past LA. Last words, Pastor Anu? I would just encourage uh, everyone who's watching that, um, just take a deep breath. If you don't understand anything, tell God, God, I don't understand anything, but I'm going to trust you. Amen. Good way to end the show. We will see you all in the next segment. You must stay tuned, come back, and find out what happened to Pastor Anu on the next leg of her journey. God bless you. God bless you.